Um, so kind of uh, the, the theme, right? Two different halves. Um, second half, 10 defensive points. Um, shut down a run. Have some plays get away from us there on third down, but uh, battle back nonetheless. First half, you know, again, issues stopping the run. Adjustments need to be made on the fly and uh, weren't. But at the end of the day, the players still fought hard. And, um, you know, I will always applaud their effort. Um, offensively, again, just trying to get some things going and, and just, you know, put the players in positions to be successful. And, um, you know, second half, again, I think you saw that. You saw the beginning of that. And, um, felt like the players had a really good week at practice. And um, what I'm learning and what I'm seeing is those things are – are really manifesting later in the game. So um, as to why, that's something that I'm going to have to really, really um, dig deep about uh, because, again, their effort is, is there and their care factor is very high. Um, and, I mean, I feel like this was, an, this was one uh, like the previous games that got away again. So... Got to do some searching. Now, the thing is, we have one more, and we have the battle for the state, right? We have the Civil War. So what we have to do is we're going to have to put together two halves. We're going to have to put the def defensive performance from this game in the second half and the offensive performance from both halves, from this half and the Arizona half. And that needs to be a complete uh, performance on both sides of the ball. And so what I'm going to make sure we're doing is we're going to make sure we're working uh, with the efforts to um, put together a complete, a complete game before the season is up. Corey, you kind of mentioned it already. This game was very similar to, to last week. After the game last week, you had talked about how, you know, you weren't upset with the players and whatnot. Where is the disappointment for you this week? Um, you know, the disappointment is this in the loss. And... Um, Again, I'm going to always say that the players deserve better. You can watch the game. And if anybody is, is watching it, you see kind of how the momentum shifts work. And then you see, um, you know, the positions that we're in in certain scenarios that, um, you know, it could be the same exact play, same exact, um, right, the next series, and it's different. And so the disappointment for me is, again, it's just in making sure – our players are fully aware, um, and that has to be hammered, I mean, constantly. We can't assume anything, and, you know, again, it's just consistency. We just got to be consistent in our message, and we have to be consistent in our execution. We have to be consistent in our commitment, you know, and that's just as a whole. So to say that I am disappointed um, I'm, all, I'm disappointed in the loss because I'm, I'm watching the nucleus of this team and I'm watching the offense and the defense and you know when you think that there's a the product is not where it should be or what it should be then you see the glimpses of what they really are so it's really um, the job of us the staff to really keep those those players, you know, all, all 11 offensive and defense in the same consistent pattern. And so the, that's what has to be the goal. What is that? Keep them there. What are those adjustments? Keep the adjustments made, right? And so um, so the disappointment is not in one side of the ball, player or coach. It's just, again, in the details and in, in the loss. Corey, for the way Arizona State was able to move the ball in the first half, did you feel – the game plan was what it needed to be, or were guys just not executing what no, you felt well, the game plan was? Yeah, well, it, the game plan was what it needed to be, but there needed to be some minor tweaks, okay? Tweaks to the game plan, and that's what happened really at halftime in the second half, and that's what I mean. Those things need to be um, – th those, those, those details and those slights and those little adjustments need to be made quicker. And, um, again, that's going to be – 
another thing that we really focus on. I'm really going to focus on that detail this week um, because, and, and, and I think the adjustment is set, but you also have to understand that the opponent gets the film. So you're going to have to always, in the game of football, right, uh, as a coach, you have to make adjustments. And a lot of those adjustments can't just come at halftime, right? You got to make them on the fly. You got to be able to make them on the fly. And so um, as you're trying to feel your way through there in that first half, when they're running, you're trying to see um, how they're going to react to certain scenarios and defensive looks that you give them. And then you have to adju adjust accordingly. So, you know, um, the game plan, I feel, was solid. Um, it's just now just minor tweaks and adjustments here and there. And that was the difference, really, what you saw in the second half. Um, so it was really no different one, one half to the next. Corey, does part of this come down, maybe in part at least, to a confidence factor that they've been close before of like a month ago, but until they get over the hump, maybe they don't quite have the belief that they, they can pull it off? See, and, and, and um, I, I've heard that, but I don't think that's it at all. Because when you watch, um, when you watch them compete, you watch them compete. They compete at the same level in, from the first series, from the first snap to the last. Um, now, you know, in, in football games, mistakes happen. It's just you can't let them happen in crucial and critical moments. And that's kind of what's been plaguing us, you know. Um, you know, there there be times where we have the momentum and then it'll, it'll halt, right? We'll, we'll fumble or um, drop snap. Um, or even if we, we got them pent, we got them, you know, second and eight, second and seven, um, next thing, you know, we may lose a gap or we may uh, miss a tackle and they get the extra eight to nine yards. Um, what that is is, again, that's just those are competitive, right, competitive errors that you live with because it's football, you know, and all you do is when they come to the sideline, you coach it up. So um, I think they want it so bad. Right. I don't think it's a um, an issue of um, learning how to do it or learning how to finish it. It's just those details. Again, you know, it's in those details that you have to make sure you pay attention to the fundamentals of football. The fundamentals are, you know, play great defense, stop the run and protect the football. And if we focus on that, I told you I have no problem going third and one and punting. I have no problem. But the thing is now the defense, you have to adjust to give the offense the ball back. Right. And put us in good field position. So until those things, I think, you know, when you're asking about winning until you until the overall understanding of the scenario and the situations of football, um, um, are clear and concise and understood by the complete, you know, the whole team, that's when you get over that hump. And um, I don't think you have a player that is intimidated. I don't think you have a player that is going into a game um, that is underprepared. Um, I, I just think, you know, those things that have happened throughout the season, um, it's just need to be kept at a minimum, you know. Corey, with due respect, in that first half you just got steamrolled on both sides of the ball. At one point it was 302 to 26. So that seems like it's more than minor tweaks. Why that in the first half and then the second half very competitive? Well, and plus, you know, a, a lot of it is going into it. Um, who knows, you know, what goes through the mind of the player. Um, but the confidence, I can tell you that the confidence was there because that's, that's, the, that's everything – that's all they talk about on the sideline when they come off. They're not that good. Arizona State's not that good. But at the point of attack, we have to make our plays, right? And, again, you don't take anything away from Arizona State. They came out and they, they started fast. Well, that's what you need to take on that, that identity in, in both offense and defense, whatever you're going to do. You have to start fast. And it's not a, um, it's not a fill out. Period. You don't want to fill things through. You have to come out, you have to strike, and you have to be aggressive. Now, um, in that, and, and putting the players in a position to do that, I mean, likewise as well for, you know, who, who's calling plays, right? You still have to be aggressive, and you still have to make sure you make adjustments on the fly. And, and that's what it was. It was an adjustment because, again, I'll say it again. Okay, you're talking about stretch, you're talking about the away zone, and you're talking about inside zone. It's not rocket science. Okay, it's not. 
Although in the first half, an offense is making it look that way, and our offense may not look make it look that way, please believe. They know the defense of players know what's coming, okay? Now it's just, again, it's just about the point of attack and making your play when it's there to be made. And so, yes, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from Arizona State, but there were adjustments made, and they were adjustments made enough to stop the seam roll. So um, what I said is exactly what it was. So you think about that in the first half, and, again, um, the, the result would be different. Now, again, what we have to do is we have to start like that next week. You can't, we cannot wait, you know, for that. It has to start. It has to start fast. Both sides of the ball, point blank. Corey, do you guys get demoralized in any way early in the game when it goes 14 nothing, just like that? Absolutely not, you know, because I think if I think if players were demoralized, I think it would get a lot uglier than 14, and I think it would go a lot faster. And then what I think you would see, I think you would see players tapping out, you know, over insignificant injuries. And then not only that, I think that you would see total eruption on the sideline, players fighting amongst players, and you know, coaches fighting amongst coaches. Those things, when you can tell that. Um, players have given up or a team or a staff has given up, then you start to kind of see unrest and you kind of see dysfunction on the sideline. You start to see things that um, that um, look common, seem, you know, threatening or seem so s severe or serious. You don't see that. And then you see the pushback, you see the fight back because you wouldn't see that in the second half. So I don't think it's the uh, 14, you know, down because they've been there before. Um, and, um, you know, it just, it, it, again, it's just knowing how to handle that no, at not one point in the game, even on down the last two minutes and 30 seconds, what have you. You see the offense down there moving the ball like they're going to go score and we're going to do what we have to do on special teams to get the ball back and make it a, I mean, a one score game, right? After scoring, going down there and going for two, make it a one score game. Everybody had every bit of confidence that we would be able to onside or pass kick, get the ball back and then drive down and then see what happens from there. And obviously the rally ended with Daryl's fumble of the snap. I know fumbles have been an issue this whole year. So there's a 12 man on the field penalty and false start on fourth down. Some of those execution errors, why do you think at this point of the year those are continuing to happen? Again, you know, you, you have to, you have to kind of look again at, because I'll never say player, right? Because I never believe it's the players. And that's, that's the honest truth. So, you know, in that, who knows? Fumble? I can't answer that, right? Who can answer that as to why we fumble a snap? I don't think you can say, well, at this point and period in time in the season, fumbles happen early in the season, late in the season. I mean, a fumble is a fumble because it is, right? Um, now, the 12 men, again, that's administrative, right? And I'm going to put that on our staff. Obviously, right? You got 12 men on the field. You have eyes in a box. You have uh, people who are controlling personnel um, adjustments. So, I mean, and I'm going to put that on myself. So when I say staff, I don't, I don't not include myself in that. Um, why is that happening now at, at this point in the season? Your guess is as good as mine. And those are things that are talked about. Those are the things that will be discussed when we get down there and we watch this film. But those are the things that need to go away and need to leave from here, right? Um, and the overall flow of the game um, needs to be managed better. And that's just that's my opinion. But um, the fumbles, I mean, fumbles happen. I've, we've been in games where the opponent fumbled you know, a certain point. So um, no game's ever perfect. You know, my philosophy is you don't turn the ball over. You know, I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather take sacks than to give away fumbles or interceptions. So um, it's just something, again, you got to work hard at and get better at. And that's, that's any football team because those are, those are the fundamentals of football, to be honest with you. Yep. Both of you, why do you think the game in that first half got away so quickly and what changed during that rally that you guys had to at least get it close and respectable in the second half? Um, you know, we, didn't, we weren't playing as a whole uh, the entire first half. Uh, you know, guys weren't you know, doing their job. We weren't executing. Basically, it comes out of that on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, when, when it gets like that, it's, it's tough to come back. But, you know, we rallied back and, and you know, we, we were on a good pretty run. 
Um, but you know, like I said, we it, when it comes out of execution, you know, we didn't execute, and, and it's tough. It's you know, it's been a story all year. But you know, like I've been saying, if, as soon as we can, as soon as we can, uh, you know, execute and get guys in the right spots, we're going to be a pretty tough team to beat. Ryan, it was a very similar game as it was down in, in Tucson. Um, you know, we talked about Corey about the slow start. Why do you think that the slow start happened? I don't know. Uh, you know, there, there could be a lot of reasons, but uh, all I know is that we gotta we gotta fix it somehow. Uh, we got one more game to to prove that to ourselves and, and prove everybody wrong. And uh, you know, I think that once you know if we come out strong, come out swinging. Um, you know, it's going to be a fun game. You know, it's the last game of the year. It's an Oregon game, so everybody knows what's on the line here. You know, Coach Hall is saying in the locker room, we got to win the state. And, uh, you know, for me personally, obviously, it's a big game. Always has been, always will be. And, um, you know, I think that we will, uh, you know, we'll get it fixed, and, and you guys will see a different team coming out Saturday. Ryan, I saw you sprint over to Jordan when he went down with his injury. Obviously, he came back, but what was your sense of what happened there? Yeah, I just seen him over there laying down on the ground by himself. And I was like, nobody's running over there. So I figured I'd be the one to make sure he's okay. And, uh, you know, luckily he is okay. You know, just kind of banged his knee up a little bit. But, um, you know, I just, I was I was looking, defenders went away, the rest went away, and he's just laying there. So I, so I you know, I, I figured I'd, I'd run over there and make sure he's good and, and, you know, make sure he's okay, try to get his helmet back. It was all messed up, try to get a helmet off and stuff. Um, but, you know, like you said, it just, Banged his knee a little bit, but I think he'll be, you know, he'll be, he'll be back. Uh, Ryan, you uh, alluded to it a little bit with the Civil War, and you have one game left to do this. You always have, it seems like, your best games against Oregon. Is, is, could you just talk a little bit? I know you're from here. What is it about that game that seems to bring out the best in you? And lately, uh, last year at least, with the whole team. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's the biggest game of the year. No matter what the records are, no matter you know how the teams are doing, you know, the Oregon game is always going to be a big one for us. And uh, you know, for me personally, growing up here, it, it's you know been a rivalry since forever, and uh, you know, being a part of it is is something special. And you know, I kind of always like to show you know. Show my best game, you know. Not not that I'm saying I'm not doing it every game. I always try to go out there every game, give them all. But something about you know the uh, the Oregon game kind of raises the level of intensity for everybody. And uh, you know we know that that you know, past games I've had successful games, so I'm expecting them to the, to try to stop the run. And and you know I'm gonna prepare for that, and I'm gonna just do do what I normally do and try to be the best me I can be. No, what did you think opened up in the passing game that allowed you guys to get going later after being shut out for most of the first two quarters? Um, I think, you know, like Ryan mentioned earlier, we just came together as a group. You know, no, we didn't change much. You know, we still stuck to the game plan. Um, you know, obviously they're stopping the run a little bit in the first half. And, um, you know, we, we figured we'd try and throw the ball. And, you know, and the coverages that they were in allowed – a lot of us to be open, you know, they like to stack the box, which most teams against us stack the box because they know they like we like to run. But, you know, you saw that we can successfully throw the ball and hopefully we can continue that next game. And just for you guys, it sounds like things, you know, the game plan it was what you expected. When things get away from you like that, what's it like on the sideline? Because it has to, does it surprise you? What's, what's the mood like? I mean, it's tough. You know, when things not going our way, guys on the sideline get down. But that's why we got to make sure we're staying up. Uh, you know, we got to have the leaders of the team and, and the position groups making sure that guys are staying up and make sure they're doing things the right way. Um, you know, whether it's simply just standing up and cheering for somebody on third down, uh, things like that. And if we if we do that, I mean, that's that's where it gets tough. That's where you see change in in, in that that momentum flip. You know, those last couple. You know, series that we had, we're moving down the field, and guys on the sideline were getting up. The fans were starting to get into it. So, all that momentum comes from it starts and begins with us uh, making sure that we're staying up because we are. I know Beaver Nation is gonna, you know, they're gonna follow us. They always have been. They always will be. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're gonna they're gonna love us no matter what. And I think, you know, like I said, it starts with us. So we gotta make sure we're staying up. What did Coach say to the team after the game? Um, you know, he told us. That we can't, you know, we can't play one half. So we gotta play both halves. So we gotta make sure we start out, start fast, and finish strong. Um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to bounce back when, when, when we're down as much as we are. You know, in those in the first half and try to come back and rally. 
Um, so, you know, he, we, he harped on that quite a bit. And then, you know, coming into next week, you know, we got to move on. And, and he told us we got to win the state, um, plain and simple. You know, this is the last game for the seniors. And, you know, obviously our last home game was here. So it's the last game of the season. And, and we, don't, we don't care about a record anymore. All we care about is winning the state. Jonathan, obviously it wasn't the start to the game that you guys wanted as a defense. Uh, what, what took so long to get you guys a new rhythm? And you did potentially find that rhythm. So what, what changed? What changed is everybody just finally buckled down and got to their assignment. Uh, it was a little hesitation at the beginning, and we just got it together and stuck together. Why, why the slow start? Though? Why the slow start? Um, I, I don't have an explanation for that. Both of you guys, what's the mood like on the sideline when all of a sudden it's 16 nothing, 23 nothing? Is it surprising when it gets away from you like that, and how do you respond? Uh, it's, it is a little bit surprising because that's not what we come in and expect. But we've worked hard enough and we're all together, working together as a team to be able to mold together and keep fighting no matter what the outcome or the score is. It, just, it gets more intense. We just try to, we try to focus on doing our jobs because sometimes we got to whack. Like sometimes we point fingers or something, but we just, we just got to make sure like we all doing our job at the end of the day because pointing fingers ain't going to do nothing. And we just, we just got to come out and keep on battling. Corey has said in the last two games that he sees it in practice, that, you know, that the effort's there. He, he sees that you guys can play the clean style, that you guys know how to play. Um, what's it going to take to do it for two halves instead of one? Keep working. Just Consistency. Keep working. Yeah. Jonathan, we saw Manasseh leave late in the game. Just you line up to him. You know, each play, can you talk a little bit about what he's going through physically and, and kind of the beating that he's taken this year? Uh, Manasse, yeah, he had a great season. He's been just working hard through injuries, whatever it happens. He's just, he's a very good player. Uh, no matter what happens, he knows everybody's positions, how to get around. He's just a hard worker.